Hi there, this is Love Johar. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel and thank you so much for watching this video. A very important video for all of you who are trying to understand what are the different clauses that you can use for your supplier agreements, for your vendor agreements, for your third party contractors that you have hired. So just watch out this video very carefully because I will be discussing the security clauses that you should actually have in all your contracts that you make for the supplier agreements you know so this video will actually help you so running a business these days is not uh, practically possible for a one person you need suppliers you need vendors you need third party contractors to make your jobs easier you know so that you can actually invest your time in the actual business growth so you know since suppliers and third party vendors are becoming vital to all organizations operations and success so at the same time this involvement is kind of raising a lot of new risks new concerns new uh, you know issues that organizations deal with on a day to day basis so for information security and uh, you know the confidentiality integrity and availability standpoint you know we need to value our sensitive information which is being handled by these suppliers which is being handled by these vendors and without proper safeguards without proper treatment this can lead to increased risk of information confidentiality breaches integrity breaches or availability breaches and our assets might be compromised so very important uh, you know thing that we need to watch out for so you must be thinking why we need to you know put in the uh, security uh, you know uh, you know safeguards security clauses in the agreements but as i said you know you need to define controls you need to have specific safeguards so that uh, you know whenever you are opting for a vendor and outsourcing any of your processes or workflows considering that it's a cost benefit and uh, you know uh, you're saving some cost out there just make sure that you're not only considering about your product or service that you want to be delivered but also at the same time you're also uh, you know making sure that all the related processes that the vendors have all the related controls that the vendors have all the all the related safeguards you know uh, what are the different security clauses you know that that you have put in the agreements are proper or not so these things have have to be watch out for and if this is not done properly you can come into risk okay so now understanding what are the different security clauses to handle different types of outsourcing risks what are the different uh, you know security clauses that you need to be aware of you know uh, iso 27001 control a.15.1.2 addressing security within supplier agreements you know addresses the security clauses and some of the examples that you can put in into the security clauses are number 1 very important right to audit this clause in itself will ensure that the organization your organization has the right to audit the vendor the supplier the the third party service provider and test the security controls test the safeguards test the uh, implementation and uh, you know anything that you want to test or check out you know uh, this is very important clause that you should add notification about security breaches this is the second clause that you should always add in all your agreements so that you know if there is any kind of uh, security breach that may impact uh, you know uh, the the vendor's organization you should be informed about that you you the vendor the supplier the 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 third party service provider should inform you those uh, security breaches and should not hide that information because this is very important and uh, data breach notifications should come to you as you are their customer right after that adherence to security practices so you you should have a clause which requires the service provider to adhere to the organization security practices that you follow some of the practices you know that that, that you want them to follow and if they are not able to do that then what are the different situations where they are not able to do that how they have overcome that 
you know how the adherence is not achievable in some of the cases you know so that at the end of the all this is you can help to prevent any security gaps or conflicts that could you know uh, stop or hinder uh, you know or you know make your assets vulnerable and you know uh, somehow you know disrupt the uh, operations or the you know entire security uh, of your assets other thing after that is response time to vulnerabilities so you should actually put in some response time you know how soon the vendor should respond if any type of vulnerability and what kind of proper treatments you know impact your organization's business by any chance very important thing after this is demonstration of compliance you know there should be a clause in your contract that says the service provider to provide independent evidence that its operations its controls are completely complying with your con contractual requirements and uh, the demonstration of compliance can be done by any third party audit that has been agreed upon by the provider and between the organization so this is a mutual agreement but demonstration of compliance is very important guys make sure you understand this and watch this part again if you want after that it's management of suppliers supply chain risk because you know the supplier himself might not be taking care of his own supply chain risks so that is something you need to mention communication of changes there should be a clause uh, where you know the service provider should inform you of any organizational changes that may impact your business for example if there is a if there is somebody who has left who was a critical part of your operations your account manager or somebody so you should get that information clearly informed you know prior to the time so that you do not get any impact right so after that maintenance of service levels the service level agreements is very important because you should put a lot of clauses you know requiring the provider to inform your organization regarding what are its plans to ensure that the service level agreements are maintained number 1 in the normal levels and number 2 during disruptions let's say there is a disruption on the vendor side will the vendor let that disruption come to your environment as well or is there a safeguard in place or is there a disaster recovery site in place or is there a you know a mitigation strategy of that disruption what what are the things in place how will the vendor maintain service levels is a very important clause you should put in there you know there may be other clauses you know that you can actually put in these are some of the things that i find uh, you know useful that i wanted to share today and again you can tailor these clauses because there is no one size fits all approach here this is my opinion what i think and uh, you should have a good relationship with your vendors which is very important so that you can you know send in some documentation send in uh, send in set of questionnaires on dual intervals periodic intervals you know uh, and you should also have a clear categorization of all the suppliers what are the critical suppliers that you have what are the you know business critical suppliers that you have what are the you know non critical suppliers that you have what are the suppliers without which your business could not sustain there could be suppliers like that right so prioritization of suppliers categorization of suppliers is again a very important thing so the whole idea of this video is do not let your suppliers risk affect your own business because there may be chances that some disruption at their end could become a problem for you in the long term so just try to mitigate those things by proactively managing your supplier risks and making sure that the agreements that you prepare are robust are you know implementing all these recommendations uh, and safeguards so that you know you can do proper outsourcing you know you can take the most benefit out of this outsourcing option so this is very important guys there are a lot of risks that may impart may hinder your ability to take take the most out of these outsourcing channels so that's where this video comes in that's where you need to understand that in order to develop and grow your core business you need to understand that you need to 
have clear safeguards you know highlighted and uh, you know mentioned in all the clauses the vendor contracts that you have that's where this video comes in handy anything that you are implementing in your organization that you want to mention in the comment section feel free to do that and uh, again take care as this is a pandemic situation and uh, feel free to comment on this video if you have any other questions regarding this thank you so much for watching thank you this is love johar take care bye bye